time to start painting some of the details. And I mixed in some model color flat earth, game color glorious gold. And painting the trim on the robes here. And um, I'm not sure if I want to do that belt yet. I'm going to hold off. But I'm also going to do a line on the bottom of the robe, or excuse me, the cape. I don't know if this is going to work out, what I have planned, but we'll find out in a moment. I let the gold dry, and now I got some model color black red. I'm trying to paint it in the middle of the gold. I want to leave a edge, an edge of a gold of the gold. Hey, yeah. What am I saying? I want to leave the gold on the edges and just have the red in the middle. There, there's English. That's what I meant to say. So now I mixed up that same gold mixture and I'm going along and just adding dots for a nice border on the robes and the cloak. I actually was going to do circles. So it was more like a chain pattern. Unfortunately, there's just not enough room. It didn't work out. The alternate thing I could have tried is do left the whole thing gold and then done the dots with the red. And that might have helped create the chain pattern. But this doesn't look too bad, so we're just going to go with the dots here. For the book and pouch, just going with some ordinary browns. This is chocolate brown for the first layer. And uh, this figure is pretty, end up being pretty dark in color. So the gold that I added and the brown will hopefully lighten everything up. I think I already mentioned in another video when choosing colors, sometimes I just choose whatever I have on my palette. And I still have some flat earth from when I was doing the gold, so guess what? The leather is going to be flat earth. Now, once again, use my standard leather color. We'll do a little bit of game color leather brown on top of this. And that'll be it. All right, move on to the face. And doing what I should, but I rarely do, starting with the eyeballs. And starting off with a little bit of a rocky sand mix with white. If I go over, no big deal, but I do want to fill in the entire area. And we go for the black then. Next, we do the black. And we just do a line and down. There we go. Oh, it's hard to see, but there we are. Now I got camel black brown. Now I'm going to shape the eyes. Just go around the outside with the camel black brown and ever so slowly shrink them to the proper size. I did this rather quickly. This was less than a minute here. Once I got this down, I can move on to the flesh. On to the flesh, and going back to my standard mixture with the Panzer Aces flesh base mixed with the shadow flesh. 
And I'm going to do this fairly quickly because mainly it's just the fingers I have to shade here. Even just the fingers of one hand. So I'm going to leave that to a wash. Also, I'm working fairly light here because I'm going to lighten the skin up pretty well. Wizards, you figure they're inside a lot, not going to get a whole lot of sun. So we'll aim closer towards the the highlights. And don't forget the ears, which I always forget. Now straight flush base. Not thinning this too much because again, very small surface area. Cheeks, nose, fingers, that's all I have to do. And the other areas are going to be smaller even still. So I'm just going to speed through this because it's just going to, it's only going to take a few seconds and I'm working on such a small surface area here, you're not going to be able to see much. Since I'm doing an old school wizard, I gotta go for a white beard, of course. A couple different ways you can do. Ah, hang on a second, I gotta switch to a smaller brush. This one is on its last leg. Where was I? Oh, um, white beard, of course, and a couple different ways you can do white hair. You know, you can go pure white, or you can go what I'm doing, which is more of a a warm white, which is perfectly fine. I undercoated first with chocolate brown just so I can get a good definition on the hair where it hits the face. So I'm just going over everything except for that little edging of the chocolate brown. Now I'm going over the edges again, just added some white to the beige. And then I'll decide if I want to do a little bit of a wash once I get that on. Mixed up a light wash of sepia and just placing it on the recesses in the corners of the beard just for an extra bit of shade because it does need it, I decided. A little around the ear. A little here and there. And that'll be it. Let's finish the bird and call this one quits. Last thing we're going to do is paint the little owl on his shoulder. And I was paint, going to paint it gray first, and then I realized eh, that's not going to work out because I don't have any other gray on the figure, and even though it's a separate entity, it still looked odd. So we're starting with ochre green as our first base coat. And you know what? I'm going to do something that may take a few minutes here, but we're going to do this in real time. And then not turn off the camera, because this should go pretty quick. Next, I want some sort of brown. Let's try Game Color Earth Brown. And I did look up on the internet for owls just to see, you know, what color I should paint this guy. And you got a whole bunch of different colors to choose from. They're quite speckled, which you really can't do in this small of a scale. So this is a somewhat made up scheme. So brown on the wings. Try to leave his chest that same color. Next, 
Let me see what I have here. I got chocolate brown sitting here, so we'll just grab that. Mix a little bit of that into the earth. I'm sort of wet blending this, which sometimes I prefer to do for very small figures. Let's add a bit more definition to the wings here. And let's darken the eyes a little bit. Oops, a little too dark on the face there. There we go. And let's go back to that original ochre green and add a little bit of white to the belly. his eyebrows a little bit. Let's highlight the face instead of darkening it. There we go. I just need to let it dry for a few seconds. I'm going to wash it and paint the beak and the eyeballs and we'll call it quits. And we're done! Yay! It came out better than I was actually expecting. Um, it was looking way too dark, which is actually one of the negatives I have with using black primer. Uh, paint one area and then where there's still black showing, uh, it tends to make the figure look very dark even though you're going to repaint those areas, but it gives it a very dark tone while the painting process is going. Would have liked to do a bit more detail work on the trim, but the, the dots work out I think. Did a lot of glazes here. I lost a lot of the highlights in the work I did on this. However, I did pick the wrong highlight color, so that's okay. The color I picked, whatever it was, sorry, I don't remember at the moment, um, would have been fine if I wanted to do some sort of iridescent thing, but as a standard highlight color, those two purples did not match up well. But uh, luckily, the glazes fixed that up. And overall, not too shabby. So let's take a final 360 and uh, thanks for watching.